In the summer of 1956, Milt Levine was at his sister's house for a picnic in Southern California. By the pool, he noticed some ants going about their antly business. All at once, Milt was transported back to Pennsylvania when he was 12 years old and on his aunt's farm, where he used to take a mason jar, scoop up a mound of ants, and watch them dig through the glass. This week, we're talking ants and potatoes down on the farm, the ant farm. After World War II, Milton Levine and his brother-in-law E.J. Kosman returned from duty in Europe to start a mail-order novelty business. Their first successful product was 100 Toy Soldiers, as advertised in the back pages of comic books. Being the novelty business, even their best ideas, like the spud gun and shrunken heads, only sold for a few years. But all that changed after Milton's fateful picnic. Once he decided to make an ant observation toy, it didn't take him long to make a prototype out of a clear plastic box used to store handkerchiefs. Then it took weeks of trial and error before the two men discovered that the best ants to use were western harvester ants, aka Pogonomyramex californicus, because they dig in the daylight. A big plus if you want to watch your ants do something other than sleep. Great underground caverns are excavated by these tiny creatures as preparation for their subterranean farm. Levine's sister designed the classic farm scene in the upper part of the ant farm. The design of the lower part was left up to the ants. Only one hurdle remained. The tooling to make this toy cost $18,000. Just to be sure, the partners ran a $200 ad in the LA Times. Two weeks later, they were flooded with orders. This is an original ant farm from 1956. It arrived to your house complete with ants and the Ant Watcher's Manual, a 12-page guide that introduced you to, quote, a busy, bustling world that shows you that ants are a lot like the nicest people you know. About six months after they launched the ant farm, they started to get interest from retail stores. This created a new conundrum because ants don't live very long after they leave their colonies. Keeping them in a box for months in a warehouse wasn't an option. The simple solution was a slogan still used today. You take the farm, we mail the ants. This new retail version of the ant farm included a stock certificate that could be redeemed for a vial of 25 to 30 ants. Kids were instructed to take the vial of ants and put it in the refrigerator, not their freezer, for 15 minutes. This made the ants less active and much easier to drop inside your ant farm. Soon enough, the ants would warm up and go to work. The whole country is talking about the ant farm, the most interesting educational product ever developed. This is the ant farm, a fascinating living TV screen. Though the company aired TV ads like this one, the ant farm really took off when Cosman got it placed on the Johnny Carson show. Soon, the partners were striking deals with 35 ant harvesters who collected over a million ants a week to keep up with demand. In many ways, E.J. Kosman was like P.T. Barnum, and the stunts he deployed early in the promotion of the pair's mail-order novelties were legendary. When he died in 2002, the LA Times ran a story on his storied career. Kosman and Levine got into the spud gun business in 1959, when Kosman was offered the tooling on a toy that turned pieces of potatoes into projectiles. He did some research and discovered that the U.S. was in the middle of a potato glut and that farmers were sitting on a vast surplus of spuds. He bought the tooling and had five tons of potatoes delivered to Toy Fair in New York City, then had them dumped on a sidewalk. Kosman was arrested, but he got bailed out in time to publicize the incident and the spud gun on TV talk shows. Buy a 98 cent spud gun and get a 10 pound bag of potatoes for free. Although Kosman and Levine had a hit with the spud gun, the sales plummeted once the price of potatoes normalized. Meanwhile, the ant farm had been selling steadily for four years straight, an eternity in the toy business. Tired of chasing fads, Milton Levine bought out his brother-in-law in 1965 and dubbed himself Uncle Milton and his new company, Uncle Milton Industries. Now with the bombastic Cosman out of the picture, 
Uncle Milton had to step up and promote the ant farm, which he did, on children's TV shows along with his young son Steve throughout the 1960s. Steve Levine graduated from college and the children's TV circuit and went to work for his dad full time in 1978. He became the CEO of Uncle Milton Industries in 1989. Generations of families had discovered the secret underground world of ants through this enduring plaything. The ant farm is universally recognized as an American pop culture icon. In 2010, Uncle Milton Industries was sold to a private equity firm. That same year, I had the privilege of interviewing Milton Levine for a documentary film called Toyland from director Ken Sons. Milton's stories and his infectious laugh were inspiring. Quite something to get a vial of live ants in the mail. <laughs> the average toy lasts a couple of years. I thought it would be two, three years and that would be it. But 50 years, I never in my wildest imagination thought it would be that long. <laughs> a long time, isn't it? <laughs> we uh, say that we sold 20 million, but that was some time ago. About 25. We sold about a half a million a year. Uh, all over the world. Look, the ants have been good to me. They brought me a lot of nice things. Put three kids through college. The ants paid for it. <laughs> Milton Levine died a year later at the age of 97. Thanks for the memories, Uncle Milton, and thank you for watching. If you had fun down on the farm with me, please share this video and consider subscribing. Is there a classic plaything you want me to cover here on Where's the Fun From? If so, let me know below in the comments section. See you next time.